Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a helmet that I just saw on the most recent episode of The Mandalorian. This was uh, chapter 15 as of the time that I'm recording it. Now, don't panic, no spoilers, not going to talk about the plot at all. In fact, the helmet isn't even new. It's actually repainted Imperial Surplus that's left over from Rogue One. It's the helmet for the Imperial Combat Assault Tank Driver. Or if it was a Kenner action figure, they'd probably call it the Juggernaut Driver. Since I'm making another Star Wars helmet, I may as well start with my good old friend, the Heavy Gunner Mandalorian helmet pattern. One of the things I've thought about changing on my dome pattern was actually making it a little bit wider. This helmet at least is actually wider. I look at it and in the show, the helmet actually looks wider and flatter on top than most of the other helmets I'm used to seeing. But the more I've worked with this recently, especially with like Bo-Katan, and I realize that I think the dome's a little too skinny. So we're gonna widen it out. Two of the three dome pieces will stay the same, but on the center parts, I'm gonna add one centimeter on the center seam side. I cut this part out twice, so it'll be a 20 millimeter increase in the center of the helmet. I traced two copies of each part onto some six millimeter HD foam. And I also included my registration marks, which makes it easier for gluing it all together. I used a sharp razor knife to cut the parts out, but I didn't cut on the lines just yet because I want to make sure that all the sides are perfect 90 degrees, so I'm going to use my bandsaw. Now, I didn't need to use the bandsaw. I could cut everything out by hand with a razor knife, but I like the bandsaw, and it's all set up and all ready to go. I curve all the cut pieces on my planishing stake. It'll be a lot easier to glue everything together if all the parts are curved first. And to glue it together, I use contact cement. Just brush some on each half of which you want to stick together, and then give it a minute to dry, or help it dry with a hair dryer. Then you can stick the parts together. The dried contact cement will stick to itself. Cementing on contact. I try to keep all of my seams as flat as I can get them. The closer they are now, the better my project will look. Once all six pieces are stuck together for the dome, I use my rotary tool to even out the edges, making everything flat. I can still use the back of the head panel from the pattern, and I cut this one from six millimeter foam. Now when I cut out the back piece, I made sure to mark the center point because I had that marked in the pattern. So I know that this is the center from the two sides of, of the back piece. And with the dome, which you know, that's the dome, right? This is a bowl. But with the dome, I know this is the center line because I can see it. And I just know that's the center line. So all I want to do is line the two of them up so I know the back piece is centered to the dome of the helmet. Because I changed the thickness of these center pieces in the dome, I wanna make sure that my faceplate is gonna be long enough to actually go around. I'd rather not have little, I can put them in, but I'd rather not have little pieces I need to add in to, to make it all match. I use a ruler I made to check the length of the helmet. This ruler is made from six millimeter foam, so I know foam of this thickness will fit the measurement. It is longer. That's kind of cool. That's kind of what I wanted. I cut out the front plate and start to glue it in, still being careful of the seams, but they still need to be as flat as possible. I get the sides to fit just like they're supposed to. And I start to get the shape for the visor. I know what it needs to look like, but I still sketch and double check that I'm getting the size that I want from the foam. The visor in the face has two layers, the six millimeter foam layer that I'm gonna cut for the actual hole of the visor. And there's a second two millimeter layer that is over part of the visor and parts of the face. I'll work out a second pattern for that piece in just a minute. In fact, the two millimeter layer will go over the entire helmet. Before I cut any new parts, I first sand down the seams in the dome because any large height difference will still be easy to see even if it's under two millimeters of foam. So this is the base layer. If you actually look at the helmet, there's little knockouts on the temple and on the cheek above the slant and a little bit on the face. Plus this is an entire raised panel that matches up with everything else. It's all smooth. The one thing I've got going for me is there's a pair of seams that are almost right along these lines here that run all the way down the back of the helmet. And those are recessed panels. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna cover this thing with aluminum foil, and then I'm gonna cover it with duct tape. 
so I can draw on the pattern that I want to make these two millimeter panels and then hopefully I can cut those out and glue them on and everything will be smooth and I'll have the recessed panel lines that I want. I did have one small problem with my duct tape. That's not what I wanted to see. So there's a difference in the colors of the duct tape. That's because I ran out of the cheap stuff. This is what I really want to use, the, the inexpensive duct tape. It's thinner, it's gonna flex better, uh, but I, I ran out and I'd rather just get it done than run to the store. So I've got my slightly better quality, thicker duct tape on the back. It'll be fine, just know that you don't need to get the good stuff, you're fine with the $4 stuff. One thing I did was copy the lines of the helmet that is under the tape. I wanna know where some of the parts are. Another tip is that rubbing alcohol will erase permanent marker from duct tape and it'll take it off of your rulers and tools. With all the pattern drawn, I remove the foil and tape and start cutting out my part lines. I end up with a complicated looking side panel and I'm gonna need two of these, a left and a right, and then a middle strip that'll be cut to fit after these are glued on. I try to mark on the helmet where I think the pattern should go, and then transfer the foil tape pattern to the cardstock. I can use that to cut a pair from two millimeter foam. I was really worried about gluing on a big thin panel like this. If I get it crooked, it's gonna be really difficult to correct it. And it could easily buckle or wrinkle. And I still need to do the other side and apply it the same way so everything is symmetrical. I took equally spaced measurements down the back to make the center panel and cut a custom panel to fit. I glued down the center first, keeping it straight to the sides. Then I slowly worked the sides down over the curves. The foam will buckle a little. It is a flat piece going over a curve. So I just try to keep the buckles even over the whole piece, not all pushed forward and happening in the same spot because that will wrinkle up and look ugly. I cut the center piece narrower than I measured so I could have a one centimeter wide gap between all the panels. Then I glue in a thin strip to make a double seam between the side and center panels. With all these panels glued on, I can use my rotary tool to clean the edges, removing any two millimeter foam overhang and bumps where the edges don't meet. Getting the skirt made to fit around the helmet was probably the hardest part. My paper pattern started as a truncated cone pattern, but it needed to be heavily modified because the helmet isn't a perfect circle. So I transfer the paper to cardstock and cut a pair from six millimeter foam. I am gonna have a seam in the back, but it'll be easier than making one perfect piece that glues on all the way around. I cut the parts of my bandsaw, and the inside edges, I tilt the table to have a 45 angle cut into them. I was also sure that I made a left and a right side. Gluing them on wasn't really hard. Uh, keeping them equal was the trick. I started on the chin and made sure the recessed almost a triangle panel on the cheek was equal on both sides. This edge. While I was gluing, I glued the edge of the skirt on top of the two millimeter panel and then kind of stretched the rest to the lower six millimeter part. Now this makes the skirt greater than a 45 degree angle, which is actually good. I then trimmed the rear seam to fit and glue those together. The next part I want to make is the respirators. I add a couple of strips to the sides of the chin. The grill or vents in the front is made up by cutting a long strip of two millimeter foam and then cutting 75 millimeter pieces out of that long strip. Now notice that there are two sizes. There are three parts that are about eight millimeters and two parts that are 12 millimeters. And I have a set for each vent. I super glue them together in stacks, alternating the sizes and making sure that only one edge is matched up. And this makes a grill looking piece when I glue it in place. I add a bottom panel to each side and cut a long rounded front trim piece from some two millimeter foam. And that size wasn't perfect, but I can stretch it a little bit and glue it in place. The face still looks flat and wide, so I started thinking about how to change it. Well, that actually helps a lot as far as getting the dimensions shorter like it's supposed to be. Do I want to just, would that work? What if I just glued a half around behind it? Is that gonna get me kind of what I want? I cut a piece of 30 millimeter half round dowel and I contact cement that in place. That's a lot better. That's actually getting, yeah, it's got that shape. I like that shape. That's a very stormtrooper shape. I add a bar of foam between the respirators and detail it with bits of two millimeter foam. 
All right. It's going to need a little bit of head padding. Not a lot, though. It fits. It, it actually fits pretty good. Surprisingly. Shouldn't be surprising. I've done this a couple of times. I sand down the corners to be round like the front grill. It looks a lot less like stacks of foam now. I add a strip of 6mm foam around the inside of the neck. It's a simple detail that I didn't see on the helmet in the show. I'm still going to need to use a wood burner to put a few more panel line details around the skirt here and a little bit on the front. But basically, from the eyes down, that's it. And the only other big piece to make is the big old honking visor thing. So let's, uh, let's put a forehead on this. Okay. The first step for the forehead is to add two layers of 10 millimeter foam to the brow. Now, I don't need to hide the seams on the underside. You can see the panel lines in the final helmet. So I've got the base, and it's a huge base, but it's supposed to be. The actual visor or blast shield or whatever it is that goes in the front is not only just curved, but then it's got this kind of a compound curve. So I think I'll just take a piece of six and I'll cut some darts in it so I can actually kind of curl it back a little bit and then glue all the darts shut and then put a piece of two mil over it that I can stretch to that shape and that'll hide all the seams. I hope. I get a visor shape started in six millimeter foam. And it looks a little too big, but I can trim it down. I add a series of darts on the top edge. The center one is a little bit longer, and then they get shorter as they move towards the corners. Gluing the darts together makes the curved top that I was looking for. I cut about half an inch off the bottom because it was still too long. Hey, that's actually finally getting there. So on the side, it's, yeah, that's okay. Gluing the dart shut made little bumps, so I sand the bump smooth and draw a line along the bottom. Now this is going to be my glue line for the 2mm cover piece. So I cut out an oversized piece of 2mm foam and make the notch that goes in the bottom right in the center. And then I carefully glue this over the 6mm visor piece, using the pencil mark as my bottom edge guide to start. And then I have the same buckling up along the edge, because this is a flat piece going over a curve. I just slowly smooth it out, and I don't make any funky wrinkles. I do get a pie crust looking edge on the top, but that's okay. I made it longer than I needed, because I'm going to trim the visor down to a nicer curve in the bandsaw. I have the center marked, so I make sure to start there to attach the visor. And I mash it on, just to be sure the glue is really sticking. There's one more strip of 2mm across the bottom, which also makes a panel line. I trim and sand the strip to fit after it's attached. I also soften the corners of the visor. I just round them off a little. It reduces the cut foam look. I add two panels in the back of the neck just to continue the panel lines from the top of the head. And I add a square of 2mm foam under the skirt. It flattens the peak that was made by that center seam. I start penciling on the details that I need to burn in with a wood burner. Then over the ear, there's this telephone looking shape. Why is there a telephone receiver over the ear? I don't know, but it's there, so I'm putting it on. Also, there's a couple of circle marks. On the back of the head, there's a row of eight detail squares. I fold a piece of paper to get the spacing for the eight marks and to keep them equal. And I made a cutout of all eight shapes at once. Now, the cutout in the paper is not perfect, but I do get a good pencil placement and everything is equally spaced. To make sure the burner is hot, I test some placement ideas. On the wood burner, I'm using a shading tip, but I also narrowed down a little into a finer point. The metal eraser shield is a great stencil for the wood burner. It keeps my shapes consistent. And I can use the slot and a hemming ruler for the straight lines. I very carefully trace my pencil line for the mouth. I keep the burner tip moving, because if it stays in one spot for too long, the foam will continue to shrink, and I'll make that line in that one little spot thicker and I'm going to use a metal template that I had made for the Gundam build to add the two panels that go in the back of the skirt. And for the eight boxes that are on the back of the head, burning each one in by hand is the best choice. I just tried to keep them all looking the same. And then I can add in those telephone ear details. The circles I cut are opened wider with a heat gun. And that's all the detail I want to put into it. At this point, the build is done. I mean, I'll have to add the visor, but that happens after paint, right? So. 
paint. I have my options. I can make it a white helmet with some black trim as it appeared in Rogue One, or I can do the dark olive drab in black as it appeared in The Mandalorian, and that's the one I'm gonna do. I cover the entire helmet with olive drab Plastidip, and then I also sprayed on speckles of black Plastidip just to make it a little darker. Like most trooper helmets, there are really just two colors, the base color and black accents. There's a fair amount of panel lining on the helmet, the little marks in the chin, there's the mouth line, there's the eight boxes on the back, the panel line on the visor, and the long lines down the head. I water down the black paint a little and fill in the recessed panels. Since my base color is Plastidip, I can use water and a paper towel to remove excess paint from places that I don't want it. I can also just paint with the paper towel, using it to smear the paint and make shadow areas. I do this all around the underside of the skirt and behind the visor. The extra detail on the neck ring is painted a solid black, and I decide to paint the inside as well, just in case you see it. I tear off pieces of polyfoam and then stipple on more black in different areas on the outside of the helmet, and also along some of the edges. I just want an even more weathered look. Now I did notice that there was a little mud on the helmet in the show, so I have a mud-ish color that I use to add in just a few spots of dirt onto the helmet, and I smear some on the chin. I think that's it. I think that's all I'm gonna do for the painting, because it is just that simple. So the last piece I need to put onto this thing, so I can call it done, is the visor. Well, I've got a piece of plastic shoved in there right now. What this is, is the leftover piece, or one of the leftover pieces from my Bo-Katan helmet. Because I had done it off-center to try to preserve as much of the rest of this visor, <laughs> I've got all I need to put a visor in this. I cut down the visor to three inches wide, and it's made from polycarbonate plastic, so I can just cut it with a pair of scissors. Then you remove the protective film, apply super glue inside near the opening helmet, and then carefully insert the visor. And I need to be very aware of where the glue is, because I don't want any on the part that I'm gonna be looking out of. Most of the materials I use for this project I picked up locally. I put a part list in the description. Now, I don't remember these guys specifically from the movie Rogue One. A according to the, the 501st database, they were there, and I believe that. I just don't remember it, and I try to pay attention to these kinds of things. But as soon as I saw it on The Mandalorian, yeah, I knew this is the helmet I wanted to make for this week. And I'm really happy with it. Now, I put this together pretty quickly. So there's a couple little things that if I was to make a second one, I'm not, I would change, but I'm pretty happy with how this is. And a weird thing occurred to me, not that weird, but a funny thing, like odd thing that occurred to me. I think this is my first Imperial helmet. I've made a number of Clone Wars tro helmets, right? I don't know, Clone Trooper helmets. I've made some Mandalorian helmets and I've made a Scoundrel helmet, but I think this is my first Imperial helmet. <laughs> All right, I'm okay with that. Because I know there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can make a Juggernaut driver helmet. But this is how Odin makes. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make a helmet that I just saw on the most recent episode of The Mandalorian. But don't worry, there's trains, so <laughs> no spoilers today. <sighs> they wait for me to hit record, you know. I wanna thank Khan Mustafa, Eric Gordon, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.